welcome to your All Active Reserve and Veterans TV series. This information education show has three goals. Tell who military veterans are, share about all organizations, auxiliaries, their programs and officers at all levels, and tell about memorials in all the cities we serve in this network. The VA system, state and county officers, hospitals and state homes are also featured. Please do check out our websites, share your program ideas and concerns via the contact information on the show. We open each month's show with a patriotic theme. Welcome to the opening ceremonies of the 2005 POW MIA 24-hour candlelight vigil opening ceremony. Thank you for attendance and for your support for those who are indeed not forgotten. Each year, by presidential proclamation, April 9th is declared as National Former Prisoner of War Recognition Day and honor those that came home. Today is National Prisoner of War Missing in Action Recognition Day. By presidential proclamation, the third Friday in September is set aside to gather and pay tribute to those great service members who are still held in enemy hands and those that are buried on foreign soil. On August 10, 1990, Congress passed a bill recognizing the black and white POW MIA flag as the symbol of our nation's concern and commitment for our Americans who are still prisoner, missing, or unaccounted for. The 1998 Defense Authorization Act noted that this flag must be flown on Memorial Day, Armed Forces Day, Flag Day, Veterans Day, Independence Day, and today on Prisoner of War Missing in Action Recognition Day. Once again to Vets Visits on TV. This is program one, number 116 for September and this is my co-host. Yes, I'm Neil Doyle back again uh, for another taping. Okay, and glad to have you with us from the County Veteran Service Office, right? Great to be here. Okay, let's move now to some dates in history. As you noticed in our patriotic opening, we are doing the POWMIA Recognition Month, and uh, we will mention the date in a few moments. We also uh, heard the uh, identification by the MC of POWMIA, as well as uh, the National Anthem by one of the members of the University of Minnesota, ROTC. On to other events. On the 2nd of September, Japan signed a surrender for World War II and the World Trade Center. Of course, uh, two airplanes uh, uh, crashed into it on the 11th in 2001. On the 14th, Francis Scott Key wrote the poem Star Spangled Banner, later set to the tune of a British pub song. On the 16th, in 1950, just north of Pusan, 
Korea. The Marines broke the perimeter and the march was on toward the uh, 38th and, and further on toward China. On the 17th in 1787, the U.S. Constitution was approved. And on the 21st, P-O-W-M-I-A, this month, is Recognition Day. The 29th in 1899, the VFW was established. That was after World War II. And the 30th is Gold Star Mother's Day. So uh, we recognize you, all Gold Star Mothers who have lost a loved one. Uh, going back to POWMIA month, uh, this is the official seal for the Prisoner of War M Missing in Action um, event. Uh, it is commonly held a uh, recognition in many locations, and underneath it says, You are not forgotten. And now, let's go to our first feature. Neil? We certainly need to remember the POWs and missing in action of all wars. Some are just now being returned. Currently, several POWs are being held in the Middle East. But let's go back to Vietnam, and here's a story from a civilian POW. Jerry talks with, us with a veteran of 25 years who then served with the State Department. Good afternoon, Richard Utech, and uh, how are you doing today? I'm good. Good, good. We're pleased to have you on uh, Vets Visits on TV, and uh, we are recording at the American Legion Post in La Crescent, Minnesota, which is your present home, is it not? Right. You had actually graduated. You decided it was time. Is that right? Right. Okay. So uh, what branch of the service did you go into? I wound up in the Army of the Artillery. In the Artillery. Right. And uh, that took you to what locations, about what year? Well, 42 uh, uh, till 46. I took basic in Texas, mm -hmm. and I went to a station in New Jersey, uh, in Georgia. And then from where we went to uh, uh, Australia, and then the Philippines. And then you got into real battle, I suppose, around that point. You what? You got into real battle in the Philippines. Well, yeah. Our, our, I mean, the artillery was mm -hmm. fired, but we was quite a ways back from mm -hmm. the, where the infantry yeah. was. You know. and, and then what time, when did you finish your, your uh, service time? I got out on the 19th of, uh, or 19th or 20th of January, forty. 46 mm -hmm. at Fort McCoy out here. In Wisconsin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, you finish up your tour in Japan, I right. understand, mm -hmm. in the occupation forces. Right, right. What did you decide in the final analysis? What, what was your, what did you decide to do with your life after you had been discharged after service 25 years? Well, uh, like I say, uh, the, uh, the State Department, they were, they were doing a lot of hiring, you know, mm -hmm. but that means you had to uh, go to different uh, locations around the country. Uh, my first assignment was uh, Laos, but they canceled that one, and uh, so then they called me back about a month later and asked me if I'd be willing to go to Vietnam, and I said, no problem. So. And what were you supposed to do in Vietnam as a civilian for the State well, Department? Uh, well, uh, we had a lot of vehicles over there, and I was the maintenance officer for them, you know. I see. I had a bunch of, uh, oh, maybe 75 to 100 Vietnamese working for me, you know, uh, in mechanics and drivers and stuff like that. Well, how long had you served in Vietnam with the State Department before a special incident happened? Eleven months. Eleven months, and then what happened involving the MPs, of all people? Well, I asked MPs if, if it was uh, safe to go to this motor pool. They, they said, no problem. And what, what year was this, by the way? It was uh, 4th of February, uh, C-47. 
In 68, and it was during the something offensive, is that right, the Tet Offensive? It was during the Tet Offensive, right. Mm -hmm. And what happened as a result of your directions by the MPs? Oh, I, I knew where I was going, mm -hmm. but we just went down the street and this uh, uh, bicycle or sickle, they call them, uh, it's a motorized bicycle, and it parked in the middle of the street and looked like they were working on it, and I had to stop, and uh, I did, and three people come out from nowhere with, uh, with weapons and mm -hmm. poked them in their ribs and told me to drive. They told me where to go, and that was it. And where did you go? What did, where oh, did you Oh, they took us down. A, uh, they called it Cholong. It's a Chinese district of Saigon. Uh, Okay, and, uh, and it was it was kind of a prison area. No, it was just m mixed right in with the, the civilian population. And mm -hmm. There was a lot of uh, helicopters flying around, and uh, we it was there was fighting going on, but they kept us safe. You know? mm -hmm. And that night we moved out, and we walked and done a lot of walking. <laughs> okay, and where did you wind up? Well, we wound up uh, toward uh, the Cambodian border, but I don't, we might have been there maybe a, eight months, a year, I don't recall, but. What were the conditions like? Were, they, were you underground or in cages? Uh, or? Yeah, at that time we were underground, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where we they had the bunkers. Mm -hmm. These were camps that were they must have had them at one time. He used them, you know. So then we moved. They moved us to Cambodia, and that's where we stayed. Uh, I'd say about four years out of the five. Is that right? It wasn't until you became a civilian that you became a prisoner of war, in effect, right? Right. Well, they called me an enemy of war. Enemy of war. Okay. So I did they interrogate you? Did they uh, torture you in any way, or? They what? Did they interrogate or torture you in any way? No. Okay. So they didn't need any information from you? Oh, they interrogated us. Yeah. But, uh, you know, being in the military, uh, you have that training. Uh, you only told them what you figured they should know, you know, because I was still working for the government. Sure, and sure. Uh, what, were the, what was the situation surrounding your release? They signed a peace accords in Paris in 72, I believe it was, some latter part of January. Mm -hmm. And then we got released on the 12th of February, six, or 73, they t mm -hmm. released us. Mm -hmm. They trucked us down from Cambodia and uh, uh, dropped us off at a, in, in the Vietnam, it was a, An exchange. It, a, uh, it must have been quite a battle there at one time, you know, because uh, the runway the, was all tore up, and uh, and that's that was uh, the exchange point, I guess you could call yes, it. Yes, an exchange. And were the planes there that you could get on board and come back t to the states? Oh yeah, well they, we we stayed around, stayed in that camp about maybe a day and a half, two days, and then the helicopters come over and landed and they took us out to the airport and, okay. and uh, they, they had four different countries involved. Uh, I think it was Romania, Hungary, a couple more, I don't remember who did, but they signed for you like you was a piece of property, you know. <laughs> they put us on the helicopter and flew us to uh, Saigon then from there we got off of that and they put us on a military hospital plane mm -hmm. and flew us to Manila. Mm -hmm. it was there about a week, I guess, mm -hmm. and well, brought I'm, us to the States. I, I'm glad that you were not uh, injured in any way. It was just a, a real confining time, though, in your life. It was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thank I think the Lord many a times. I mean, if you've been... Uh, life-threatening sickness or something, you would have died because they had no facilities to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now, uh, finally you got home, 
and uh, you settled back here in in this no, community? No, I stayed in North Carolina. Oh, you stayed in North Carolina. That's where I was living at that time. In, in South Carolina? North, North, North Carolina. North Carolina, okay. Uh, did you have family there? Yeah, I had a wife and two boys. Oh, you had a wife and two bo children that were waiting for you. We hadn't oh, talked yeah. about them at all. And I, you didn't have much communication with them, did you? Or No, they they would let us write uh, uh, once or twice a year, but okay. family never received them. Okay. I, think, uh, I don't think they ever mailed them, you know. It was just uh, make you... So wanting to know, well, we're not all that bad. We let you right home, you know. But yeah. They never received They them. never received any notification. What a surprise when they finally found out you were safe. Well, they declared me dead there once. You know. Yes. Do you want to show us, please, something special that a daughter-in-law made for you? She has a she has a uh, a hobby of making quilts, does she right. not? Can you reach that yeah, um, sure. uh, special that. item, please? Yes. Can you tell us uh, who that person was? But Norman Brookins, uh, uh, from uh, he lived in Pennsylvania. And what year was that that you touched base? Uh, I'd say maybe '74. Okay. And so then he started uh, getting information together, and, right. and you were in touch by telephone over the right, years. Right. And so he's written this book, Civilian POW, which is what you were. Very good. Now, um, people can get a copy of that, too, if they want to. I, well, they, they, can, they can contact me, and I can give right, them the information. Right, right. And I appreciate so much you're giving me a copy of that book to well, read. Well, I thought that yes. nice appropriate thing to do. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing with us on Vets Visits on TV, Civilian POW. And now our County Veteran Service Officer report. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit has ordered the VA to publish the new Agent Orange presumptive rules within 30 days for paying disability benefits to Vietnam veterans stricken with ischemic heart disease, Parkinson's disease, and B-cell leukemias. Once the VA regional offices receive the regulation, they will promptly begin rating the numerous claims they had already received for these conditions. Our September POW MIA recognition continues with the ROTC of the University of Minnesota program at the state capitol. A member of each of the five branches of service now lays a wreath while a trumpeter plays the theme song, beginning with the Coast Guard. And then listen, please, for the statistics in the wars of those who were POWs and MIAs. We'll hear as much as we can of that program as time permits. <laughs> Prisoners of War, Missing in Action, and is Mr. Stan Kowalski of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. In World War II, there were 78,777 Prisoners of War, Missing in Action. Korean War, 
there were 8,177 prisoners of war missing in action. Laying a wreath for the Vietnam War, prisoners of war, missing in action, is Mr. Jerry Kaiser. In Vietnam, there were 2,459 prisoners of war and missing in action. Laying a wreath for the Gulf War, prisoners of war, missing in action, is Commander Charles Altman. In the first Gulf conflict, there is one missing in action, and in the current Gulf conflict, there is still one missing in action, Sergeant Matt Malkin, who was missing on April 9, 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, I will direct your attention to the Prisoners of War Missing in Action table. This small table symbolizes the fact that members of our profession of arms are missing from our midst. They are commonly called POWMIA. We call them brothers. This small table is set for one, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his oppressors. Neil Huron will play a rendition of Amazing Grace on the bagpipe.
Now, before we close our show, we usually ask for a final word of wisdom, and that would be what, Neil? Often it's hard for veterans to keep connected uh, with new regulations, laws, and uh, current events with veterans' benefits. Some areas you can uh, keep a lookout for updates is state and local affairs, uh, as well as local American Legions, VFWs, and DAV uh, chapters. Mm -hmm. They have literature available, and always they can drop in at their service officer or be in contact with the state VA commission, right? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next month for Vets Visits on TV. Thank you for joining us for this month's show. Seen in over 350 communities for over 3,500 half-hour periods. Our websites have additional information about the show and are updated bi-monthly. To contact us, you are welcome to use one of these electronic methods. For all ground mail with questions, suggestions for future programs, you may use this address. Our IRS nonprofit status is 501c3, Information Education. The Minnesota Commissioner of VA and these state-level organizations believe in and endorse VETS visits. Join us next time, won't you, for VETS Visits on TV.